The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, full of kindness, out of your great love, you raise us up from sin and death and make us alive together with Christ. Write your word upon our hearts and restore us that restore in us the image of your love, that by your spirit, our way of life may become the way of Christ, through whom we pray. Amen. At this time, we will enter into a space of silence. Allow yourself to get comfortable and grounded. A singing bell will ring at the beginning and the end of our time. If you find your mind wandering, use a centering word such as Jesus, to bring your spirit and body back to the present.
Christ Jesus, we meet the God who knows our weakness and bears the wounds of the world. Therefore, let us be bold as we pray, trusting that God draws near to those in any kind of need. Um, today, we are, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite prayer practices, the labyrinth. Um, first off, I got to do a disclaimer. A labyrinth is not a maze. Um, a lot of people get them confused. A maze has dead ends and false rooms and ways to block you. A maze is a puzzle. A labyrinth isn't. A labyrinth is a continuous uh, path towards the center. And then the same continuous path is, is I say watch because I usually walk a labyrinth, but the same, the same continuous path is used to, uh, in reverse, to leave the labyrinth. Uh, there are very famous labyrinths. There's one, I cannot pronounce the name. I want to say short. True. I'll say chartreuse because I don't know French. Sartre. Um, huh? Sartre. Sartre. Okay. I've been there. It's really beautiful. It is. It is probably the most famous labyrinth um, or one of the most famous labyrinths in the world. And it is in the cathedral in the French town of Chartres. Close. Um, and it is a very beautiful labyrinth. It is not in the shape of the ones that I'm going to show you. The ones that, the, if you have the, um, if you have this one from your worship bag, the other ones I'm gonna, the other two I'm gonna show you today are similar in shape. I don't know if this is a technical name, but I think of them as the brain labyrinths because they look like a brain to me, but that's me. There are people, and if you go and, and Google labyrinths, there is going to be a whole thing about, well, you pray a certain type of prayer going in, you pray that same or a different prayer in the center, and then you pray another prayer on the way out. I don't. Um, I pray as I feel, as I feel led and as my needs are. So I'm not going to talk to you and tell you, you got to pray, you know, this going in and pray that when you're inside and all this. Um, I am mostly used to walking a labyrinth. I have done it by myself. I have done it with my children um, at different ages. I think the youngest, um, I think Jackson was probably seven or eight the first time he walked a labyrinth with me. And I've walked a labyrinth um, a couple of different times with youth groups, confirmation groups. There's a beautiful one um, at Luther Park over in Danbury, Wisconsin. And I was very surprised to find these seventh grade kids. There were six or seventh, may, I don't think they were eighth, but six or seventh grade kids that really felt, um, felt that walking the labyrinth was, was uh, I don't want to use the word beneficial, but it really spoke to them. I have a professor at um, Luther, who is in a wheelchair, and he says he feels, you know, that that's just not the thing for him in a wheelchair. And I have not talked to him about the practices we're going to try today, which is the finger labyrinth. But not everybody can, like Dr. Jacobson, not everybody can walk a labyrinth. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of different versions that um, these are actually CJs. And I'm a needle person, needlework person. So I love this one that somebody did for her that is on fabric and they just um, embroidered it. I like it because when I do a labyrinth, a uh, finger labyrinth, I like to close my eyes and not concentrate on whether or not I'm in or out of the lines. I don't know if any of you are like me, but I have to color, I guess it's OCD, or a little bit of it. I have to color inside the lines. I Going outside the lines is very, very disturbing. So it's the same thing when I do this, but this one, I can feel the fabric, I can close my eyes and feel the stitching on the fabric. 
and when I can need to turn and everything. And, and being a quilter, I just love this idea. The ultimate for me in a finger labyrinth, again, a borrow from Pastor CJ. This one, the grooves are in it. So I can just go and run my finger right in the groove. And I can't easily, well, I suppose I could go this way. But it, once you're in the groove, it helps me to stay in there. And then I know as I'm going, okay, once I hit the end, okay, deep breath. If I want to change my prayer, I can. If I want to linger in that space, when I walk a labyrinth, I linger in the center of the space for a long time and really use that as my time to talk with God and to commune with God. The one that we have here, I'm going to, I'm not going to have us do it like right now. I'm going to invite if, if you have this um, to use this practice during our next round of silence. Or you can use what we've already done, any of the prayer practices we've done. You can use the prayer beads, the coloring. Uh, I know that Pastor CJ has, um, if you have the bag, has the M&M &M prayer in there. You can use any of prayer practice that speaks to you. But if you try the labyrinth, don't worry. Don't be like me. Don't have the OCD. Oops. I stopped here. I got to get back to that place if my finger moves. Just pick it up wherever your finger is and just keep going and pray the prayer of your heart. If it is a prayer of thanksgiving for the gifts you've been given, if it's a prayer of need and of help, if it's a prayer just of praise of how wonderful and glorious God is, uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about crossing the lines. If you ever want to walk a labyrinth, please let me know. We have a ton of them. I think it, last time I counted was about six months ago and there were over 50 or 60 labyrinths in this Twin City area alone. Um, there are churches such as um, Lord of Life out in Maple Grove that have one. There is There are parks that have them. There's a park, um, CJ, I know I can put it in the chat if, if you're interested, the park that um, we went to over by her, that's uh, part of the Three Rivers Park District. In Plymouth, there's an Arboretum that has one. I've walked that one. And there is a large, very nicely uh, kind of paved out one in Como Park. It is between the conservatory and Como Lake. So if you come in off of Lexington and going towards the conservatory and you take that first right into that little parking lot down there, and then you walk up the hill going towards the lake, it is very large. It is very beautiful. The um, very physically easy to, to access. And um, the only thing is, is if the park has a lot of kids in it that day, it might not be very quiet but it is a very uh, fun, nice one to walk. And that one my kids and I have done a number of times over the years. So again, if you're interested in walking when the weather gets a little bit nicer and you want to do a labyrinth, um, just let me know and we'll get, we'll get to one and, and we'll walk it. Uh, I think that's about it on labyrinths right now. So let me end with a prayer and um, just think about finger labyrinth, or you can use a marker on it, do it with a crayon or a marker or however it feels comfortable for you. Pray the prayer of your heart. I don't know if we've got the next slide or, there we go, okay. God of all compassion, gather our prayers in your mercy and grant, uh, grant to us what we know, not what we know, what you know we need. 
that we may walk in the life and peace of your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and our salvation. Amen. At this time, you, can, you may anoint your hands with the sign of the cross using water or the anointing balm, if you have it. And you may unmute as together gather by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our mother, father, God in heaven, God in heaven. Hallowed, be, hallowed your be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. On earth as is in heaven. Give us, give us, give us the day of day. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. As we, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from the For the kingdom, power, glory, Now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will enter back into some silence. Like Allison said, you can use this time to try out your labyrinth, to color, or use the prayer beads, or simply just rest. If you find your mind wandering, Use a centering word such as Jesus to bring your spirit and body back to the present. We will use a singing bell at the beginning and the end of our time.
receive this blessing. May Christ Jesus dwell in our hearts through faith as we are being rooted and grounded in love, strengthened by the spirit and filled with all the fullness of God. And all God's people said, amen. This ends our worship for today. Um, just a quick announcement. Um, stick around if you're able for lunch via Zoom, if you would like. Also, we are going to continue these prayer practices through Holy Week. So we have two, let's see, we have one next week, and then we'll have one, we've counted, one on the 31st, that week of Holy Week. But you'll need some special materials for that. So I'm going to put a, a link to register for that in the chat. Um, or you can let me or Allison know if you're interested and we will make sure to make a kit for you and you can pick it up on Palm Sunday when we'll have drive through Palm Blessings. Um, but hope you can join us that Holy Week for one last prayer practice as well. And we hope you found this helpful. So with that, you may unmute and share the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you. And